Hello, I'm Paul McManus from Nothing Here Is Real. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the techniques I used when I created the Tokamak Knot video and hopefully answer some of the questions that I was asked shortly after it was posted. Okay, so let's get started. This is the geometry of the knot. Um, this is created using uh, a built-in add-on. As you can see, it's a continuous tube. That is very simple to create, as I'll get to in a minute. You can also see that we have a starfield backdrop. I will explain how that's created. The start of the video, the knot is created, and I will explain how that is done. And shortly after that, we've got some camera transitions, and I'll go into some of the detail about how they are created towards the end of the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create the star field. To do that, we need to access the shader editor, select world, switch into render mode so that we can see the effect of what we're doing, and probably turn off overlays. Let's get rid of the default cube. And down here, we just have a simple gray background. What we need to do is add in a texture, a Musgrave texture, and plug the color straight in there. And then you'll see we have this nice blobby black and white color. Change the scale to 1000 and the detail and dimension to one. We now add in a color ramp and we set the black to roughly 0.6 and then the white to 0.8. You can adjust these to taste, but this gives a, a reasonable star field. Now, in EV this isn't a problem, but if you were rendering this in cycles, this background is actually a light source and it will illuminate the model, which it wouldn't normally do in space. So what I like to do is add in a, a camera path with a color mix. So that if the camera is being seen, then we see the stars. And if the camera is not being seen, then it's pure black and that will then stop this star field from illuminating the model. Okay, that's that bit done. Now we'll add the torus knot. To do that, you need to go into preferences, into add-ons, type in extra, and make sure that add mesh extra objects is selected. The documentation says this feature is in the add curve extra objects, but that's incorrect. It's actually in the add mesh extra objects. And then with the cursor at the origin, add torus objects, torus knot, and we get that. Torus knot type should be three. I think the default is one. And the resolution, Make sure it's over 100. It just gives us a little bit more geometry, which when we add the uh, subsurface modifier will uh, not give us faceted silhouette edges. Go into edit mode and into face select, Alt S then to scale up this to somewhere about there so that the Tubular parts are inflated, but not self-intersecting. 
and we go and add a subdivision surface and we set that to two and we go to shade smooth now we have a knot shape that we're going to use for the render at the start of the animation you may remember that the knot is invisible and it grows along its length until the start joins up with the end. In order to do that, we add another modifier, a build modifier, and we just leave that set to the default settings. And with the current frame set to one, the knot will disappear. And if we press play, you will see then that it just starts to grow until it gets to frame 100, which we've set for the length, and then it's complete. Okay, so now let's add a material to this object. For this model I use an old favourite of mine, displacementlow.exr. I obtained this a long time ago, I honestly can't remember what the source was, but I do know that you can find it online if you Google that name. And it's a square tile bump map, which we can then use to cover the torus and provide all the information we need to create the surface you see in the final animation. So in the shader editor, we switch to object and we create the new material there. Add in the image texture. And if we flip into render mode, you'll see that nothing is happening. And that's because we haven't unwrapped it. Now, what we have to do is create a seam. And then We can unwrap it. Reset. Follow active quads. And then we get this. Which, depending on the scale you want to work at, might work, but I scaled it right down so that it was a little bit more interesting now in order to animate this we need a mapping node and a texture coordinate node adding in and I set these to 25 10 and then you can see there's a reasonable quality there. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that wherever you put the 
end seam, you may see a discontinuity in the texture. This is going to be a little difficult to see here because it's in the dark. So let's just to look. And if we change the x coordinate, we see oh, that happens to have worked out OK. And this is how we animate it. So what we do is we set set the frame to one, set x to zero, and put a keyframe there. Just so that you can see what's going on, let's just turn off the build modifier. And then if we go to 250 and we set the x coordinate to five, and then Add another keyframe there. Now that's going to speed up and slow down. We want this to be a linear motion, so we need to switch to the graph editor. We need to make sure that's selected before we do so. Switch to the graph editor, and then this is the curve. You can see it's not a linear motion. Go to channel. Extrapolation mode linear. And now that's a straight line, and you will see it will carry on beyond the last keyframe. So now, if we go back to the start and press play, you will see this motion is nice and smooth, and that will continue as long as we need it. Okay. Let's go back to the shader editor, and you can see now that we have these nodes for this material. So the first thing to do is to add some color to this, and we do that with a color ramp, and we place the color ramp after the displacement low.exr image texture and before the principal BSDF. And then we also need to add in a math node between those two. And the reason for this is that the EXR that we're using is only using the upper shades of gray. It doesn't actually go to black. So we can afford here to multiply this by two and we still get reasonable definition from the image, but it also gives us more of the range on the color ramp to play with, instead of it all being bunched up in the uh, upper two thirds. And for the colors, I just used a very simple orange to red and then control left click to anchor another stop in the center then inserted a, a lighter color there inserted a lighter color on the other side of the center as well and then we get this effect here now we may tweak this later, but that's good enough for the moment. Now in the in the final render, what we had were lights in certain parts of this shape, and we do that by it adding in an emission shader and a mix shader. And we also need a math node up here. And we take the color input into the top node of the math input, and then when we make this a less than. 
which is there. And if we quickly look at this, we set this down to something like 0 0.1, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, something around that area. And you're starting to get the darker panels in the EXR revealed. Okay, so what the whole idea is that we We will take these and make them emission shaders and the rest can be just the regular colour. So if we then put that into there and then we get this effect. Okay. Now at the moment that's not very bright, so let's take that up and make that. There we go, that's 15. And in the animation, I also used the same color for those so that there was a little bit more harmony there. Now, in addition to that, we also want to set up a displacement. And what I did with that was took the color output from here straight into displacement. Now that was a little bit too severe, so then I added in a vector displacement node, set the scale to point five and we made it the height input and not the normal input and that gives us this effect now we're still a little bit off from the results i had in the animation and the part of the reason for that is that i use metallic and i took the roughness down to Point two, and there you, see, you can see we're starting to get to something close to what I had in the animation. I also used a clear coat of one, a clear coat roughness of point three, and over in the render settings, we have ambient occlusion and bloom on screen space reflections and then things start to perk up a bit okay and that's the torus and if we go back to adding in the build modifier you can see this thing growing and animating okay so the next stage was to add some interesting camera positions and motion and in order to do that we take the camera I'm going to switch to solid render mode for this. Um, Alt R and Alt G will move the camera to the center. RX 90 and GY minus 40 to position the camera over here. This is the start view that we have and if I move to frame one you'll see this is the opening shot and then at frame 150 I'd set the camera to be 65 units away from the origin so when the 
current frame is one. We need to keyframe the camera location. Go to frame 150. Set that to minus 65. And press I again to keyframe that. And then we move on three frames to 153. And we set that to minus 18. So this gives us that first zoom. Keyframe that. We then need to set the next frame at 300. So I've extended the end to 500 so that we can see the effect of it. At frame 300, we Keep the 18, so we just keyframe that again, and then we go to frame 303 and we set the zoom to minus 5. So this is really close in now, and we keyframe that. Now, if we look at the graph editor, you'll see this kind of effect going on. Now, we need all of these frames to be linear. And I should have set this at the start, but we can change that now. So if we look down, you'll see that the interpolation method is Bayesian, and it should have been linear. And that will give us straight line segments. And that'll do for this bit. And then if we go and render this, you'll see that the camera pulls back very slightly at the start and then zooms in. It's reasonably stationary and then zooms in again. Okay. Now, in the uh, animation, there's a little bit more of a bounce at the end of each of those zooms and the way we do that is we select the position just before the zoom starts and we change the interpolation mode to bounce and if i zoom in here you'll see that it adds in some extra motion to that and we do that on the next one as well and select that to bounce and if we zoom in on here you'll see that there's extra camera motion being added as part of that interpolation method and now if we do this If we show this in render mode and each frame then okay and now in order to see the full effect you need to switch on motion blur so now if we step through those frames you'll see you get this effect in between and eventually it stabilizes. Playing that gives us that effect. And that effect. I'm not going to go through the rest as that involved a lot of fiddling and experimentation but the other camera motions are very very similar i didn't use the bounce on every transition but uh, i think you'll be able to appreciate how that was done from everything that i've described here today i hope this was useful and you got something from it i'd love to hear your feedback on it and thanks for taking the time to watch i'll see you next time Oh, 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 oh,